With the recent announced price increases of SSDs, it might be time to look for other options. Handbrake now supports the M1 Codex. Hey everyone, I'm Bryce Steiner here, Peace in the Valley. This is not going to be a hands-on uh, outdoors video. It's going to be a video about making video. And I recently uh, discovered something that I think may be uh, very helpful to you. It's been very helpful to me. And uh, I will show you and demonstrate to you what I mean. But uh, I've been using a software called Handbrake for quite a while. Handbrake is a great software and it's open source. And what it does is basically recompresses your video. And what I discovered is, if you, especially if you use an M1 Mac, that it can really process your files down. But even if you don't use an M1 Mac, if you use Windows or an Intel Mac or something else, processing your video from H.264 to H.265 makes a huge difference on space. Now, even if your device has the option for it, like maybe your iPhone, or uh, your, like here, like your GoPro, uh, this is actually a DJI Osmo that I use. I love the stabilization on it. And what I found out was the files are absolutely massive on here. Absolutely massive. So a 15 minute file is over four gigs. And you're probably seeing the same thing. So you have an external drive that you have to edit off of because they're so large. And it's not, uh, it is not unrealistic to have 100 gigs of video in a project, even if it's a relatively small project. So what I found was uh, these here don't have an option to use H.265. I think some of the GoPros do, but even if you have it, maybe consider trying Handbrake to recompress. And the great thing, and I mentioned the M1 Mac, is that on the new version of Handbrake, if you have your settings right, and it's not by default, but you can process at 100, 170, 200 frames per second compared to maybe 30 or something else. And even 4K video, it can process and fly right through. So I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration, but you can expect to see file sizes that are 10% of the original size. So if you had a file that was four gigs or 4,000 megs, it'll be down to 400 megs. And I think that is pretty incredible. Uh, what it means is, is that even uh, the lower end max can really process the files just fine on their hard drives, their SSDs, and you would actually be able to process these in no time. So anyhow, I wanna show you right now, we're gonna move on to that part. So what I'm talking about here is on this computer, and of course, I just have a my old external SSD, it's super fast. I don't even really use it, but it was what I was using six months ago. And it's a two terabyte SSD. Then I went to an eight terabyte SSD and it just got massive. And so now I am looking at alternatives and now I found that software can do this and do it pretty well. So here's the example I wanna give. This video is a picture, I'm going outside, I'm standing in front of a small black locust, I'm gonna turn the sound off. And this video here, Okay, this is the compressed file, and you're going to notice that it's 1.02 gigs. The original file right over here is 4.78 gigs. I cannot find any noticeable differences between the two when I go back and review them, even when zooming up in the video. This works for 4K, 1080p, 2K, whatever resolutions you have, I have not found anything that it does not work on. Now, I do believe that older devices may struggle playing it, but uh, many of the new ones should not, like your new iPhones, well, in the last five years, I would expect. 
and computers should be able to play it just fine, whether it's Windows 10, Windows 11, or Mac. I just checked and I found out that Windows 10 and Windows 11 cannot natively play H.265. You can download the free player VLC and you can play it that way. So here is the settings that we need to make this work. Because I went through and reprocessed it and my file size, my SSD, went from being 75% full, and this is after deleting yeah, some stuff, to now being about 10% full. And Angel can now actually expect to do hers on her. She's got a uh, little M1 Mac Mini, or not Mac Mini, uh, MacBook Air. And it works fantastic. It was also relatively inexpensive. Uh, it's on the lower end on the Macs. This is an M1 Mac 16-inch MacBook Pro that I am using right here. So what we're going to do now is on this video, we're going to go into uh, Handbrake. And I would suggest using the newest one, whether you're on Windows or Mac, especially on the Mac, the M1. Get 1.51. And if newer versions are out by the time you watch this, keep going on it. But here's what's critical is set up your video and you can pick the basic uh, 1080p or so. And we're going to go through and make your settings work for this video. So in the summary part, uh, we're going to here's the settings that I use. Pass through common metadata, align AV start. You know, I think that's already by default. That would be as if we start with uh, just their standard that loads for 1080p. But mine work for both the 4K and 1080. Uh, I, I think even probably 6K if you are really into that. Even if the video does compress a little bit more, which obviously it's doing something converting it to 264 to 265, it is doing something along those lines and it's doing a real high compression. However, it's not a noticeable compression that I can see if, uh, especially when you compare to what YouTube is already compressing or what Facebook is already compressing. I'll tell you the video on Facebook is absolutely nasty looking and users can change their defaults, but it still does not look good, but at least it gets it out there for your channel. If you are working on starting a channel, uh, this will really help, especially if you don't have a lot of great equipment on this. So we're going to go down here uh, to dimensions now. And on that tab, we see that we have a resolution limit of 4K Ultra HD. We're going to leave it right there. That way, if I'm recording in 1080 or 4K, it keeps it both the same. Now we'll go to filters and uh, you can see what we have selected here. Video is where it makes a big difference. And the video encoder, the default, you want to switch from 264 to 265. And you're going to see 265 right here. You can try that. You're going to processor is going to get a little warm. It's going to process it just like a standard computer. But what we're going to do though is go to something called H265 and this is only on the M1 Mac, I believe. Go to H.265 M, uh, excuse me, uh, video toolbox. So H.265 video toolbox. Select that. And I did some tests at various quality settings and I checked it out at 55. I checked it out at uh, 35. I I'm down to 29. I'm going to leave CQ at 29. Why? Uh, because I really can't see any difference except for I have a lot more space. That's the big difference I'm seeing. So if if uh, slide test it out on your own video, slide that around. But what happens is is the processing rate just speeds it up six times or more. It'll go from 30 frames per second to possibly uh, 100 and 180 frames per second or 160 frames per second. So that is where this happens at. It's called uh, Video Toolbox. Go ahead and click on that. And if you have 10-bit video, go to the 10-bit video toolbox. 
But what that does is the M1 processor has the encoder built into the chip. That is why the computer can run so long on its battery life and also so long on its, uh, and make the processor so fast because it's, it doesn't use near as much. Okay, the everything else I usually leave the same. I save it as a new preset, and you'll see that I have it saved as Bryce's test toolbox video. So I'm gonna show you the difference here right now, just in these settings. We're gonna load up that video. Okay, we'll just start off with this 4K video right here. It's called uh, DJI, it's, a, it's actually a time-lapse video, but it'll still, I think, show exactly what I want shown. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this over here into the open window. You can do whole folders, and the way you do that is by not selecting the file but clicking off of it, and then it'll scan all the videos in that folder. Then, once you uh, to do that, you can say add all titles to queue. Uh, if you have JPEGs in there, it might add those in too, but you can always exit them out in this window here. This is the queue window. Let's go ahead and we're going to clear the queue out. Okay, now we're gonna to go to our video setting. Now this is a preset that I have saved. We're just gonna to go to the standard H.265 and we're gonna hit start. Now because I am screen recording, it may affect my speed anyhow. We'll find out. Okay, standard screen recording at 4K, it's processing at about eight frames per second. It's dropping down to seven. I don't know if the screen recording is affecting it, but you'll notice up here that my CPU is going all out. It's working real hard. So we're gonna go ahead and stop that. Just stop. Okay, now we're going to go back and change from 265 to 265 toolbox. And we're gonna leave it at the, I think 29 is where I had it. This is the only change. We're gonna hit start, click overwrite. Okay, scanning that video. And you're going to, uh, I hope, see a big uh, increase. And you're gonna see right here, because it's a 4K, it went from about seven to eight frames per second and we're now at about 24, 25 frames per second. Now we're down to 22. So it's moving about three times faster on this video. And the CPU isn't working nearly as hard. And I am just running off battery too. So this is a 4K video that is all running pretty much almost in real time. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this one. Yes, stop all. Okay, we're gonna clear that one out. Uh, and I want to go find a, that one's 4K. I really want to find a 1080 because that's what I record most of the time in. Okay, so here is a 1080 video that we used the other day. We're going to open that. I'm going to drop that in. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the H.265 the standard setting and hit start. Okay, since I do record most of my videos in 1080, that's what I'm going to. Okay, you're gonna see now we're at 27, 28, 26 frames per second. We've got about 17, 18 minutes left on our processing. Okay, that's a long time. But if you can let it go overnight, doesn't really matter. You're gonna save a huge amount of space. Okay, we're gonna stop this one. And now we're gonna change it to the video toolbox. And it's actually recommending going to quality of 27. So I'll just leave it at 27 since that's what the default wants to be. And we're gonna tell it to start again. And uh, right now we are running at 76 frames per second.
Okay. I'm going to see if stopping the recording, the screen recording, actually makes a big difference. So we're going to stop the screen recording. Okay. Why did you stop? Oh, I have voice activation turned off on. Okay. We're going to go ahead and push uh, start. And I believe I still have it at, let's move our quality at 29. Now we are averaging 181 frames per second. So screen recording uh, for this video actually steals a whole bunch of processing power. So you're going to notice that. So that actually cut our processing speed in half by just screen recording. However, you're going to see better numbers. I'm at 179, 179.28 frames per second. So we're going to go ahead and stop that. Nope, stop. Okay. And I'm going to now switch it to just standard H.265, where it doesn't use the acceleration uh, of the codex being built into the M1 processor. We're going to go ahead and push start. You're going to see an improvement here too, specifically because I'm not screen recording on this Mac. Now the CPU is running a lot hotter. It's got all 10 cores or how many ever it has going. You're going to see a similar result. Now, instead of being two minutes ETA, it's at 17 minutes ETA. So we're processing at 25 frames per second. That part didn't change much. We were getting similar to that uh, while the screen was recording. So screen recording must be using those same codecs too, because if I stop it, I don't mean you. So I'm looking on here and it is working out tremendously well. So what are you going to expect to get? You're going to expect here that file sizes are 10%. Might even be better if you use their default settings. But the key is, is using H.265 Toolbox. That will make your little computer, without much space, be able to do all the videos that you need to do. Anyway, I hope this helps if you're starting out a new channel or even if you've been uh, fig trying to figure out what to do with all the old videos that you still want to keep around and you want to have access to, but you just don't because the file sizes are so large and it's using up all your space. Handbrake is a fantastic product, super fast, especially on the M1. But H.265 is good no matter which wh whether you're using Windows or whether you are using a Mac. Take care and have a great day. Stop recording. She kept shutting off. <laughs> hey, Percy. How are you?